evening, everybody, or good morning, uh, or assalamu alaikum, or peace on you, all of you. Thank you for joining me today. I am Richard McLeod. I am from broadcasting to you today from Newcastle upon Tyne. It's the, I suppose it's the northeast cold corner, but very warm heart of you, of uh, England. And today we'll be, uh, I'll be hosting uh, the two great artists that I had the pleasure and the honor uh, to meet before uh, today and uh, have spent some time with them to know them, Hanifa and Faika. Uh, Hanifa Adam and Faika Opal. Uh, Hanifa, sorry, where is my point here? I'm waiting. Uh, yes, Hanifa Adam. She's a self taught uh, artist, multidisciplinary, uh, from Lagos, Nigeria. Her work explored issues related to identity, culture, and representation and society, and society, with her personal experience and observation serving as a focal point. Hanifa is a contemporary mixed media artist whose work range, ranges from painting to photography, experimental, digital, and food art. And it did really well, the food art. Her work has received significant coverage from a number of international publications, including CNN, BBC, and New York Times. Hanifa mostly renders female forms celebrating her subject matter, the women. By attempting to capture her essence, they provide an opportunity to contemplate. So um, go back to uh, Hanifa. Uh, she basically, she celebrated the, for, the female uh, form art, the Muslim uh, form art. And, she, and uh, she became well known and famous when she dressed a Barbie with a hijab. That went viral in 2016. That drew the attention of many um, uh, international, global social media and media, like the CNN, the BBC, Al Jazeera. Um, and since then, she's been in the eye of the world, doing lots of different art, experimenting with different art. We will be um, will be speaking with her and explore more about she as a person, as an artist. Uh, her aspirations and work and projects, as well as well, we'll do this with Faika. Um, Faika Opal, um, another gorgeous, great artist that I also had the pleasure uh, to meet and discuss uh, her artwork with her. Uh, if I can, sorry, this is the uh, beauty of uh, working home online. So she, as an artist, uh, Hanifa, she's... Um, she, I mean, both artists have very uh, interesting things about them. And the, the, together, in contrast, they'll, you'll explore some really interesting um, facts about them, which will, I suppose, in my views, will explore that is, there's many roads that will lead to Mecca. So not just there's not just one right road, but there's a few roads. Um, Faika studied uh, Masters and Fine Arts degree in Punjab University, Lahore in Pakistan with distinction she received a, she was awarded the gold medal then she moved to UK she got married and moved to UK in 2007 and uh, continued to be um, art of practice alongside of being a freelancer art tutor as well but her main focus was on growing uh, her family focusing her children and a um, uh, be the mother that she would like to be and you will see more of this, we'll explore more of that. Uh, so during that time, she was contemplating, she was planting, and um, so for the future, she will be uh, cultivating, inshallah. The, she's got fascinated with the uh, female dancing, the ballet, uh, ballerina, and moving to UK have given her the chance and uh, in many ways, to explore that uh, subject even further and painted in many beautiful paintings. And she described her work as a self-expression for self-satisfaction. And she wants her visual art and emotional therapy uh, for, for herself, but also for the viewers. She has participated in more than 12 exhibition. Some of them were a group, but many of them are actually solo uh, in UK and out and um, around the world in Pakistan and different parts of the world as well. Um, and she's both great artists are with us today to tell us more about them as a person, to know them uh, closer to them, to be closer to them and have a closer look for them as a person, 
what makes them tick as an artist and what makes them uh, the creative juice to um, to flow, I suppose, and also uh, what they're doing and what they would like to do. And hopefully um, you will enjoy that journey uh, together as I did enjoying exploring this with uh, Hanifa and Faika um, in the past few weeks. So uh, Faika and Hanifa, Faika, Salam Alaikum, how are you doing? Salam Alaikum, I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to say um, it's my pleasure to be here on this platform. And thanks for giving me a chance to be here to say something or express myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining uh, us uh, today. Um, it's a great pleasure to have you and to know you even further more. And I'm sure the audience would uh, love that. If you tell us uh, a bit about you as a person, um, and um, about your start and how you got into art, just that. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to be um, in short. Yeah, as a person, I'm very sensitive and uh, I love to stay with my family. And that is the reason I work from home. And as an artist, what I feel, I express. And uh, I feel like there is so many things going on in everybody's life. Nobody's having a perfect life. So I just, my aim is to give a little bit relief through my art. And when a viewer look at my work, look at my art, he or she feel refreshed and come back to life. This is my aim. And in simple words, my message is happiness. Oh, uh, thank you for sharing all that beauty in the world. Uh, Faika, can you tell us a little bit about you, please? Yes, I am from Pakistan and uh, uh -huh. I completed my studies from Pakistan. I did my mm -hmm. master's from there. I, uh -huh. um, uh, after graduation, I started as a lecturer. And I did there um, um, more than 10 years. I <laughs> did my lectureship there in Pakistan, along with the, my this job, I was working in a software house as a freelance um, graphic designer and a website designer. And along with these two things, I used to work, uh, I started my own online business. And uh, four thing which I used to do and still is doing painting, and uh, yeah, I had a very busy life there. Then after uh, getting married, I came here. And uh, obviously that was a different phase. And I got into a different phase, which totally require, uh, required at that time, different FICA, the, the FICA I used to be. So yeah, this is, this is a story about me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Hanifa, will you tell us a little bit about you as well, please? Yeah. Um, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Um, my name is Hanifa Adam. I'm from Ilori, Nigeria, even though I'm currently working and living in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm a mother of two beautiful sons, and I um, actually- How old are they? <laughs> <laughs> One, three. So I have I have little toddlers now, and they are a bundle of energy and <laughs> happy they are right now, so that you guys can have my full attention. If not, it will have been three of us um, on this platform. But yeah. <laughs> so um, originally, I I actually studied to um, be a medical scientist. I have a master's degree in pharmacology and drug discovery. But after, uh, from Coventry University in the UK, but after my master's, I came back to Nigeria and I, I, through social media, I was nurturing my art site and I just went straight into the world of um, content creation. That was what made me start blogging. I used to be a blogger. I would blog about my faith. I would blog about fashion, food, and my art. So I started creating arts from there on Instagram and it got a significant amount of following. And what made me actually go straight into arts was winning a food arts competition in 2000. 
2016, organized by Relay Gallery in Nigeria. So yeah, um, I, 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 I hope that's answered the question. Okay, yes, uh, that's really a very good start. So what makes you, as an artist, what entice you? What instigate artwork, especially that you have variety of, of art forms? You don't have, you don't stick to just one form. I, I know, I, I, it just goes to show, it goes to show how I can be a restless person. I'm a multifaceted artist and I'm also a multifaceted person. I'm not just one person, I think. <laughs> That sounds wrong. I'm one person. <laughs> it's just like, because due to my love of experimentation, my curiosity, I love like trying my hands in different things. I get, I get inspired by everything around me. I get inspired by my environment, my story, um, you know, the female form. And I also draw a lot of inspiration from my experiences. A lot of times it's what about, it's about how I want to like inspire the world. It's about how I want people to get inspired by what I create. So it um, pulls from me a lot and it has made me to be able to have a wide range of beautiful um, expression and different methods to my work of art. Okay, what, what drives you to different form? What makes you, because you've done the NFT, for example, uh, you've yeah. done the food, you've done the wire, you've done the classical painting, you've done the digital art. What attracts you and makes you go and explore, especially that your background as well, it's not really artistic, you, that, you studied science. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was <laughs> scientist, but you, you, you know, I've actually been creating art since I was a little kid. I. One of my earliest memories is about creating artworks. I remember creating chocolate bars from clays. When I was in secondary school, when I was in high school, my work was one of those. When we did fine arts, they would keep them so that they would hang it in the fine art department. You know, they won't return it to me. Others, they would for some for some they would return it back to them. But when you have like an exceptional gifts or talents, they put it up in the department board for everyone to see. So I've always had a flair for art. I've always mm. loved it. And I mean, when you grow up in the kind of society that I am, sometimes your first thought is about survival. You will think about what you want to actually do that would actually um, be sustainable. Um, in, 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 my, in, this, in my society, art wasn't something that was um, very financially rewarding as it were. But right now with, with social media and content creating, I mean, a lot of people are actually making it. I mean, just like you mentioned with the NFTs, the NFTs, a lot of people are making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Not me though. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It's changing people's lives. I mean, if you're lucky enough to actually be there when you started early, a lot of people are banking on that community now, and it's a new um, world of Web3. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are catching up with that aspect where digital artists are getting rewarded for their works. Okay. Well, I'll take that question to Faika. Faika, as an artist, um, you went through different phases. So in Pakistan, you were um, from uh, you were painting certain items, certain forms, and then in in UK you would paint in different forms. Can you tell us a bit about this uh, phase and, and fusion, if you like? Yes, uh, I mean this is very important for our journey for an artist. I mean, with the passage of time, you learn so many things with the experiences with your exposure. Obviously, I was there in Pakistan. Um, uh, exposure was, I won't say limited, but obviously when you go to other country, meet people, uh, converse with them, understand their psychology, they understand their culture. That is the, that is, that make a big difference. I mean, that is, you can say a big impact on the artwork uh, or anything on the personality as well. Obviously, personality has changed. Uh, you absorb so many things with the passage of time here. Yeah. I started, I used to paint flowers. 
I used to paint uh, female dancing figures. But when I moved here, um, it, I won't say that my interest changed. Interest, uh, there in Pakistan, I love to paint ballerinas, but with my imagination there. When I moved here, I got a chance to, you know, see, observe them live. The, that was the opportunity I, I was given by Allah. So I wanted to avail this. And uh, there in Pakistan, I was interested in uh, musical instruments. I wanted to learn um, uh, musical instruments. I wanted to learn dance. I wanted to learn singing. But due to other commitments, and uh, at that time, there wasn't many opportunities available. So when I moved here, things were different. Uh, I wanted to do and still want to do so many things, but uh, I'm holding at the moment myself and I'm putting my kids uh, and introducing these kind of things, artistic things to them. And I think the things which I want in myself, I am seeing these things in my kids. My, my, mm -hmm. my, my daughter is learning flute playing, singing. My son is uh, learning guitar playing. So this is another thing which I am, you know, uh, observing and uh, enjoying. Yeah, when I moved here, so I got a chance to see ballerinas. Um, I struggled to get into ballet schools because uh, here so many things, I mean, you can't go to um, young children's school to study them. You have to get BBS checked and so many other things. But, you know, when there is a will, there is a way. <laughs> so um, luckily I got a chance uh, from a local school. They um, gave me permission to come and visit them, to see them, to observe them. So uh, luckily I got this chance and I, I not only visually, I wanted to paint them. I just wanted to, you know, get this, understand the soul of the dance. So I got that chance uh, to observe them lively. Uh, so I can say that belly is the most beautiful, inspiring art form um, where what human body can accomplish when heart is determined and devoted. So this is what I saw that there. And uh, I found now painting ballerinas, they are totally different uh, in my expression. Okay, um, there's something interesting about you. You have not gone classically with painting, what do you call the Bahlul, the, the, uh, the person who goes yes. around and that, because um, that's very, very common uh, subject form to paint in the Islamic world, in, in, in Pakistan, in Iran, but you went the opposite. So uh, that's usually male, uh, fully dressed, going in circles, you went completely opposite. And, and obviously this is, it's somehow associated with the Islamic culture. You went completely opposite. You went Westerner, female, ballet. Mm. So can you tell I, us about this a bit? Yes, it's, I found it curious. Telling the Rish, I, I have, I've seen many artists, they are painting them. Yes. I don't know. Uh, I want to paint them, but first I want, I know, I want to feel that. I don't want to do the thing which I, I can't feel it. Fair I mean, enough, yes. Painting Darvish is uh, uh, that level of, you know, concentration, that level of devotion. Uh -huh. When you find that devotion in yourself, you starting, uh, you know, swirling, and that swirl is around one dot, that yes. one point. Uh -huh. So I think... I want to paint it, but I think I'm not ready to paint that unless okay. I feel myself, the soul mm -hmm. of that, and mm -hmm. I, I can, I can, I, 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 I'm sure that I can do the justice. Mm -hmm. Then I will be able to paint it. So, okay. And secondly, um, I, I like to paint female figures. They are very, they are very, you know, soft emotionally. They are very very fragile, they are very, I mean- Strong at the same they, time. They, they are very soft, fragile, but even then they are very strong inside. So I, I want to show up and paint their happiness 
and the happiness when you are internally so happy you don't see what is going around you you are you know totally inside you and when you are you're meeting yourself you you feel like everything is you know dancing everything is so colorful <laughs> so that is the you know moment or that is the thing i want i want to paint and that is what i paint that okay. internal happy feeling mashallah tabarakallah thank you um uh, i must uh, just say that um, we will be taking the questions. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, the audience, please feel free to put them in the chat. We later we'll be collecting the questions and we'll be relaying them to the panel. So, okay, uh, Faika, that's really lovely. Thank you so much for sharing this. Um, if I can go just one step back or forward, um, you decided that you want to look after your family. Uh, that's your choice. We're going to speak as well with Hanifa, who decided uh, 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 almost the opposite to you. And I would love to explore that. So you decided to, to look after your family. Hanifa decided to look after the family, but also do the art. You, uh, you practically did a very less art on the account that you want to look after your children, and that's your prime target. Can you tell us a bit from an artist's point of view? Um, how was how did you come to this decision and what was the benefits of that as an artist yes uh, i mean uh, as an artist artist uh, i would i would claim in a way that uh, for uh, females because i'm female then i'm an artist okay so i have seen i don't know uh, i'm talking about myself okay i have noticed and seen that there are two phases in uh, female life one is family and other is professional. So these are, you know, it is, it is not easy. And uh, I, I find it, okay, you can't do justice if you are taking both things um, at the same time. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about so many women are doing uh, these both things at the same time. But I think I professionally, I was growing. And I did a lot, 10, mm -hmm. 11 years after completing my studies, then natural, it may be natural that I need a break from my professional life. I wanted to have a family life. And okay. when I moved from Pakistan to here, there wasn't any family support available. I and mm -hmm. my husband, obviously, and there wasn't anyone else. Obviously, you know, it when the, the, the people move to any other country, they don't have, they don't carry their family with themselves. No. So they have to manage everything by their own. So I thought okay, it won't be justice for my kids that I leave them uh, unattended or we both are struggling to find some carers, some crash, some, some support mm. uh, on and off. And I thought at that time I won't be able to do justice with my with my okay. role as a mother, with my mm -hmm. role as a wife, with my role as an artist, or with my role as a professional. So mm -hmm. I hold myself for a few years. Mm -hmm. And that was the hold for only professional life, not for the personal uh, growth. Okay. I did so many things while yeah. staying with my kids, because here yeah. in UK, there's plenty of opportunities when you are staying with your kids. I mean, you, you, you take your kids to children's center, there are plenty of courses available. You can join those courses. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did them. And I learned so many things as uh, I, I understand the culture, I understand the psychology of people. And this mm -hmm. is, these are things which are now helping me to grow as an artist. Mm -hmm. It's after seven years break, I started working again as a professional artist. Okay. So I had been, you know, practicing a little bit to, to mm -hmm. you know, warm up myself or to keep connected with my art and art material and art activities. I had been participating with the other uh, exhibitions. I joined a different art organizations, but physically I was all the time with my kids. Mm -hmm. And that was the thing, I think that was very important for me. Now I realize it, that break, that understanding of that phase 
and during that phase learning a lot and using those learnings those uh, experiences in my uh, practices now maybe uh, this is the reason that uh, my art is totally uh, at some level now mm -hmm. so yeah okay very good so you have you you spend that time you want to dedicate your fa your time for family because um you need to give it justice. You have not neglected your uh, artist side or professional even side, and you kept feeding it with different um, streams of education, visually and reading and practicing. Uh, but also, you've never also stopped collecting art materials. Yes, <laughs> that was the biggest hobby. Still, I prefer buying anything else like jewelry uh -huh. or clothing. I prefer to buy these uh, things, art material, art supplies, and uh, yeah, this is one my one of my uh, favorite hobby <laughs> collection, <laughs> art material. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, Hanifa, yeah. if I can ask you also the same question, but obviously in your case it was completely opposite. Yeah. So you have two full time children, <laughs> three and one who demand of your time beyond yeah. imagination, yeah. the demands is just really unimaginable. Uh, you also told me in our offline chat that they will, uh, they wait for you to pray so they can climb on your back <laughs> and play. So this is a handful, really, job. Um, At the same so time, you chose to be uh, do art. So if you tell us about your choice and how it's working with you. So basically the simple thing is if i do not create if i do not create like maybe painting or like a food art or content for my instagram i will be sad it's 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 as simple as that 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 that's like my essence that's that's my life so i love creation i love creating so i would always do that sometimes it's even therapy or self-care for me like the process of creating something and then seeing the final work so um and i didn't really take a break from my career i continued to do the work because i felt like i could combine both even though um it affected it a little bit i mean i'm not doing as much as i would i can't mm -hmm. just up and travel now because i'm tied down sort of i also can't go to too much like you know anyone that is like free to do whatever they want to do now so it's it's been it's been an interesting journey because while i'm also creating and experiencing motherhood i'm also taking from that experience to express myself in art and even though it's a mess sometimes we do paint together and <laughs> it's oh i would have loved to show you some of their artworks they actually have yes. artworks. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not it's not here it's not okay they're they showing my art not their work <laughs> <laughs> but, but sometimes i i frame up their artworks and actually put it in the house because it's something we do together and we experience together so it's it's been it's been interesting so far really but i decided mm -hmm. that i'm going to just do everything together. If I need to do any serious work, I wait for them to sleep at night. And yeah, I, I've just, I've, I've, it's, it's, it's very, it's a very rich experience. And it's also something I can always draw inspiration from to create my artworks. I mean, I even have a project that I'm going to be showing sometime. And it's all about my experience as a mother and the whole journey of motherhood, what I've learned, and what a lot of women are facing, um, trying to combine everything together. Very, very good. So um, creativity basically for you is an, an outlet, uh, as the Kaiser have described it at some point. Uh, creativity is your outlet to, to be able to be happy. Uh, and you're trying to be creative rather than just not just waiting for these children to sleep sometimes is come and join me and paint with me <laughs> because you're not going to stop painting we still want to be working with them <laughs> look after them that's really really clever and if, wait for me i can find 
then? Should, should I, should I, like, we could yes, we will uh, show some of the artwork. Okay, go on if you can. Uh, okay. We will be shortly showing some of the, uh, we'll do a slideshow uh, of your artwork. And we would like you also to talk about the different paintings. Um, each uh, Faika and Hanifa will be showing will be showing the artwork, and they'll be spending five. Oh, hello! <laughs> Is that a bird well, or a plane um, or Superman? That's, that's the beauty of abstract work of a two-year-old. She was uh -huh. this. this. is in my room. <laughs> I love it. I see a bird. To be honest, some some people say a turtle that's pooping. So it's 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 however like interpreting it anyway <laughs> <laughs> i love it okay so we'll show some of the some of the artwork now uh, we'll start with uh, hanifa's uh, artwork and if you can talk us uh, about each slide please yes um i think there is one of me now am i is this the one i'm looking at now is this one i'm sitting in front of the yellow painting yes okay so um this was one of my collection it was a collection of um women portrait i wanted to celebrate like womanhood and because i'm a woman and that story easily comes to me so i wanted to like um touch on issues affecting women in my society especially so this woman is, she seems african because of her headgear and turban and she's looking forward in like a glowy um background and it's interesting that this artwork, it led me into um, another style of painting, if they can show more. Okay. Oh yeah, this one. <laughs> this is, <laughs> we had this conversation. So this looks very abstracted. This is abstract, but if you okay. look, it looks like a group of women. I yes. Exactly. So I, as a Muslim, um, a lot of Muslims believe that you're not supposed to create um, human forms. So mm -hmm. I, I, I was trying to reconcile my faith with that. I mm -hmm. wanted to see if I can do something else. Mm -hmm. um, then I, via picture editing, I mm -hmm. like turned them into an abstract form. You can still sort of see the figures, but it mm -hmm. is not it's more abstract. And around the figures, those are markings that I put on the background. It is a language system that I am developing. I'm still working on it. I, it's a mixture of Arabic and um, Yoruba. I'm a Yoruba woman. Because I'm from Lori, um, there, there is a really um, big um, Islamic influence in the way we write, we, mm -hmm. we write Arabic. It's, it's called Ajami, like Ajami mm -hmm. script. It's Arabic, but when you're reading it, you're not really reading Arabic words. You're reading like Hausa words. So it's, 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 a, whole, it's a whole thing. But basically, I'm okay. this writing system that I can use as patterns on my artwork. So I wanted to keep it as halal as possible, just like a lot. <laughs> yeah. I understand. So uh, I'm playing with color. Second, yeah. It's third a, painting. This, these are watercolor paintings. I wanted to do mixed media work. Like I said, I love experimenting. So apart from doing paintings with watercolor alone, I also did needle and threading on it. So those busts coming out of the female um, portraits are actually needle and thread with gold and red threads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Very as good. you can see, female forms. <laughs> I only create I think. Fair enough. Uh, second, uh, fourth slide, please. Oh, this is with food. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, um, I do food art. Uh, mm -hmm. This has allowed me to work with lots of brands, both locally and internationally. You know, they use them for adverts, they use them for social media campaigns. This was made with Luru. It is um, a powder that is made from baobab leaves. And it is um, an, a delicacy that is enjoyed in um, like Northern Nigeria and from where I am. So it's, it, it looks light, bright, beautiful green now, but when it's in soup, it's like really dark and 
it's it's it looks really dark, but yeah, it's it's called luru, and we used to use it to make obe luru, which means luru soup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I uh, will we'll show one uh, more slide, and then we'll go to uh, Fika. It's also the same. This is also made with same luru. principle. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, and I take it uh, from what I've read, um, this was featured, different feature, different of your artwork have featured with BBC and CNN and Al Jazeera. Um, okay, we will uh, go back to you shortly afterward. Oh, sorry. What I was saying uh, some of your artwork was featured with BBC and CNN. We'll talk about this uh, shortly now oh. after this in different platforms. If we can show some of the artwork of FICA, please. Okay, if you, uh, FICA, if you tell us, uh, so this is, was this painting in Pakistan? Um. Actually, I work in three different uh, styles in three different okay. projects simultaneously. One uh -huh. is uh, because I my roots are there from Pakistan subcontinent. So, okay. Yeah, and I had been painting the subjects when I was there uh, from my student life to my practical life, professional mm -hmm. life. So this is uh, uh, inspiration from Mughal miniature. So, oh, that's a new one. That's the twenty twenty one. Yes, but um, this is what I'm I'm painting as well. This is sub, this is a subject I am carrying, and I love it. Uh, two more subjects uh, in different styles I work uh -huh. simultaneously. So mm -hmm. it all depends upon my mood, and okay. my mood is to work on um, um, subcontinental Mughal miniature style, uh, cultural style. I work, I paint these kind of paintings. Which is mm -hmm. totally a different style, totally a different subject. People love what it. What inspired you to, to paint this one in particular? Uh, basically, uh, as I mentioned earlier, my message is happiness, and I want to uh, I'm I want my viewer to have a look on my work and feel uh, some time away from their daily hectic life or what they are going through, which is not positive. So away from negativity, away from depression, away from some, uh, you know, some sadness and absorb these colors and this subject in themselves and reboot themselves and come back to life. So yeah, this is sort of cultural as well um, uh, and colorful as well. So yeah. So behind them, is it the moon or the sun? Sun, sun, the sun, sun. is source of energy okay. and uh, yeah, source of life. Flowers are okay. source of or depicting happiness, colors mm -hmm. of life, productivity. And these two women, they are enjoying their, what they have got from the life. They are enjoying it and um, yeah. Are they dancing? They are. <laughs> they are. Okay. Sometimes they dance. Okay. Sometimes they just stay there to enjoy whatever they have been blessed with. Mm -hmm. I find them really beautiful. And, and I'm, I, I'm finding also fascinating the makeup you put on the girls. So you've got this thick green <laughs> eye shadow. Uh, they're very sharp. Uh, uh, eyebrows as yeah. well uh, so it's, it's interesting yeah this is this the reason i i mentioned earlier that uh, this is inspiration from uh mobile miniature style if you look at mm. those miniature mobile miniature from subcontinent uh -huh. you will know they they used to paint sideways mm -hmm. and uh, not realistically uh because they uh, my, but my work is a little bit different but at that time miniature was yes. supposed to be Halal, mm -hmm. and they, they 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 at the time they took these uh, figurative work uh, sort of objects, not the figure, not the human form. So that is the reason you see um, uh, there there is no perspective 
the many perspectives in one uh, picture you can uh, you can notice but mm -hmm. i have taken few elements from there which uh, inspired me um mm -hmm. the way the women are i'm presenting these women uh the style i have taken from there inspiration mm -hmm. i have taken from there and mm -hmm. i used it in the paintings and this is the subject people love it and uh, they want to you know have them uh, in their uh, in their homes so uh, i would say that uh, we are working as ambassador i am working as ambassador if i'm mm -hmm. going there i take ballerinas to to my country <laughs> to pakistan and uh -huh. people love it and as a because i am you know uh, i am representing pakistan as well i am representing uh, uk as well so and i'm ambassador of two countries so yeah when i uh, show my work here i usually uh, uh, show these kind of paintings here people love them and uh, this is how i can you know, introduce my culture beautiful. and the art form here beautiful okay yeah. if we can have the next slide please flowers Flowers. There's no butterflies though, but flowers. <laughs> so yeah, um, as I mentioned earlier, that I work in three different styles, three different subjects yes. from uh, inspiration from Mughal miniature, which I have you have seen mm -hmm. uh, before the first slide, and I paint contemporary flowers as well because uh, I have seen I want my work to be in in every home, mm -hmm. everywhere. So I don't want to, you know, miss that that thing. People they don't own my work because it is figurative. There are few people. There are many people. They don't. Uh, they, they don't want figurative work in their homes, uh, on their walls. So I want my work to be with, with them as well. So I think this is the thing which uh, which forced me or compelled me to paint flowers as well and these. Flowers are painted in contemporary style. These are not realistic sort of paintings. I do. I enjoy what I do. I express myself fully, and I don't bound myself that uh, these things has to be like this. This is my self-expression, which I enjoy. And uh, these contemporary flowers, people who they don't want to hang figurative work on the walls in their houses. They love buying my floral paintings, which are very colorful and lively. And they they say that when they look at my uh, colorful flowers, they feel very refreshing. They feel very lively, and this is a thing they that is the reason they want to uh, they want to have them. And uh, yeah, they 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 buy them and they 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 make them part of their family, which is you know very. very satisfying for me okay i am mm. my work is being part of so many families in a positive mm. way that's a nice perspective that your painting becomes part of a family yeah. somewhere so part of you is actually part of a family somewhere exactly. Exactly. that's a beautiful perspective Obviously. can we have the next sorry go on yes no 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 please go ahead no no go on please i mean i mean you use if you look at in this way if you want to own something you like it and you want to be part of you want that thing to be part of yourself or your life and mm -hmm. if any artist work is being bought people obviously they like it and they they are buying it or uh, because they want to be make a part of that thing or the artifact or the art piece of their family so that is a very you know very unique feeling when you uh, you you have this and you find that people are you know loving your work indeed okay if i have second uh, the next slide please ballerinas <laughs> ballerinas this is the third <laughs> you you have noticed this is totally a different uh, style yes. mm -hmm. i i don't do these uh, deliberately uh, okay so when my mood is to paint a uh, uh, mogal mini in traditional mogal miniature style that that subject compel me to paint in that way i don't do it deliberately it happens mm -hmm. automatically it happens when i paint ballerinas i don't know whether it is embedded in me that they should be uh, painted this way 
but automatically my my brush my colors colors i won't say colors but my brush strokes handling is totally different at the time when i'm handling ballet series or ballerinas so you think you find it uh, ra, uh, it is more classical uh, more um impressionistic style mm -hmm. so altogether different from the previous two paintings which have you have seen yes can we have a uh, next one please whoa the red is quite prominent here yes <laughs> and uh, i would uh, thank i would say thank you to the model and she helped me a lot with uh, with this um, subject uh, for my this is the this is the painting which i exhibited recently i had a month ago a solo show in pakistan and mm -hmm. it was uh, and, um, the title painting of my solo show. So everybody loved that because of the yes. subject and bit of, because of the it's color, beautiful. lively colors and freshness. And uh, yeah, that was the you know uh, most uh, favorite <laughs> painting of my um, exhibition. This exhibition. It's beautiful. Today. Is it available as a print? It, Sold. <laughs> as a print? It is sold. Even as a print? Um, if anybody wants <laughs> prints, prints would be available. But usually okay. I sell original. Um, okay. Yes, mostly I deal with originals. Prints, if anybody is interested, I can get prints for them. But they are... I... I... I, I put... I introduce prints as well from my work. And okay, very good. Prints. Okay. Yeah, prints 10 percent for Mike Fest. <laughs> <laughs> prints can be available. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Um, okay, uh, next painting, please. We'll show the last painting. Uh, painting oh, that's another. That is, yes. yes. That is cultural series from more yes. religious style. And mm. you will notice the handling of figures is totally different. Mm. And this is not my deliberate effort. This is automatically it happens when it's my beautiful. is to paint these. Automatically, style, colors, handling is changed. It's I beautiful. Yeah. Richard, yes. Whilst I've got Fika talking about a painting, I mm -hmm. really want to, her to mention she did a collection on famous women from around the world. I oh. don't know if you've got that painting here. Would you like Fika tell us about it? Uh, yes, so please. Amazing project she did with amazing pictures of famous women. Uh, mm -hmm. Expand a little bit, Fika. I don't know if you've got any pictures here to show. We had the Nigerian Queen showcase um, on our MacFest last time. They, they, they are in my system, but they're not on this computer. Okay, no problem. But tell us about it. Yes. Um, would you like to say something about them? What yes, um, I painted revolutionary women around the world. It was a series, it started accidentally. Um, I painted uh, one, um, uh, just a simple uh, sort of live study painting and it was in, in, in uh, Egyptian style, seated sideways and this and that and straight fringe and straight here and I wrote, I don't remember those lines, but it was like, I am beauty with brain, I have power to rule, still I need to tell who am I and everyone was un under that painting on social media, everyone came up with the title, yes, you don't need to tell, it is Cleopatra. So that was the idea. It struck me that if a simple seated sideways women painting or drawing, people just uh, come up with the, um, with the title that it is Cleopatra, there are many, many women who have done so much in history and we don't know even their names. Uh, I mean, image is something different, but we don't even have, have a clue how many women they in history they have done a lot and they to change the history. Can you mention so that was the, that was a thought came in mind at that time and uh, uh, with the um, help of my niece Saira, she used to work there in uh, Muslim heritage something and yeah we uh, started collecting names and then we started studying uh, those women 
from history, their cultural, their background, their um, geographical background, what they did at the time. And this is how I perceive their images. And with the perception, I imaginary I painted those uh, uh, female uh, portraits from history, um, 12th century, 13th century to 14th century when uh, there wasn't any image available, obviously they were uh, imaginary portraits. Uh, maybe if you uh, go through these women's uh, history or life biographies, you may come up with some other image, but that was my perception, which I painted. And MacFest at that time, they gave me chance to showcase my work a um, couple of years ago. And, uh, and that was, a, you know, that was uh, something I wasn't uh, ready for that, and they gave me gave me chance. And uh, at Gaskell House, I presented my work, and that mm, was beautiful. I love at that time, and uh, I'm still. Uh, I mean, beautiful. I'm, I'm very much known as <laughs> <laughs> as an artist, revolutionary women around the world. Mm -hmm. And I must say, thanks, uh, Kesra, for giving me that opportunity to show my work um, on your platform. Um, You're so, welcome, uh, sister. Just mention the names of the women you covered: Cleopatra, Fatma Jinnah. Just yes, I painted uh, many. Uh, that is uh, Nana Asmayu. Uh, I painted uh, Queen Amina of Sari. I painted uh, um, uh, Razia Sultan. I painted uh, Fatma Jinnah. I painted um, Elizabeth Gaskill, and many other uh, painted, but still. Uh, it can be a long, long uh, portfolio. I'm, I would say I'm still, I have this in my mind and I will, at some point I will start working with, on this project again. Uh, but at the moment I'm holding it uh -huh. because you have to do justice if you're doing something. And uh, I think at the moment I'm so busy holding exhibitions and doing all these things. So I'm holding that project. Obviously I will start again. Uh, paint and furthermore research. Beautiful. Would, would you like to share something of your life, your, your amazing art life, please? <laughs> um, yes, by all means. Uh, uh, Kaisara insisted that I'll share some about me, although the whole, my program was working with my uh, project coordinator, Nashua, just to uh, showcase the uh, beautiful artwork of Hanifa and Faika. But I can only say yes to Kaisara. Um, so I'll be showing um, some of, of my work. I've got a, a, a PowerPoint presentation uh, that I prepared earlier. Uh, so um, my name is Richard McLeod. I'm an architect. I'm also a artist. I've, my art form takes my art takes several forms. So architecture itself is a is an art, in my views, uh, or it can be art. Uh, but also I did photography, filmmaking, um, uh, painting, and calligraphy painting. Uh, I came to the UK back in two thousand and one as an asylum seeker. I wasn't the stereotypical asylum seeker who came just because um, he was in fear, if you like, of uh, uh, life. But it was it was more complicated issue. And alhamdulillah, I came. I already had a um, good education, um, good uh, good experience uh, as a professional. So I came and I managed to engage in the community and society quicker. But uh, so I'm Lebanese. Uh, I've grew up in Saudi, and I, um, that allowed me, gave me come a, a bit of an experience. Um, it was amazing because growing up in Saudi, Saudi became my home. And when I went back to Lebanon, I had my first cultural shock. Um, and that have played a big part later in my adult life, if you like. I um, was a traveler for a long time. So if I can go back to this slide. So I was a traveler for a, for a long time, uh, moving from uh, Lebanon to Saudi. Um, even in Saudi, uh, when mom and dad 
got separated in divorce and moved uh, from the household of a Lebanese man into the household of a Saudi man. And that was a bit different. Um, don't get me wrong, I had the, you know, the best stepdad in the world, uh, God rest his soul. Um, and I still love him to bits to, to now. So I didn't have a, a, a stereotypical negative experience, but that was important for my social, for my DNA makeup socially, if you like, that all made uh, me later. But for a long time, I was a traveler. And um, I finally, when I settled in the UK, and I suppose many of the uh, audience maybe can relate if they were the first generation, like for example, FICA, moving from one country to another, you almost uprooted and planted somewhere else in a completely different environment that will take a long time to some, some actually hit the floor running or they don't realize that actually they're not hitting the floor running because they, they, there's things yet to come to terms with, to understand. When you've been living in a different country, well, in your country, for example, your homeland, you already had your network, you already, you already born in a network, you already have that access to that network, which makes your life easier. When you come to a different country, you'll have to create those network for yourself. Um, sometimes not successfully. Um, I spent many years trying to explore myself and reinvent myself. So I did law, uh, then I did filmmaking, and I went into painting and I specialized in uh, calligraphy. I also did, um, I was a researcher for Newcastle University, research assistant for the University uh, of Newcastle. Um, and then I decided I just want to be an artist. So I painted the largest Arabic calligraphy paintings in the North, and they are on display. It was a paid commission from Newcastle University that display in New Newcastle University. Uh, Boris Johnson was one of my um, uh, clients, uh, David Cameron as well. I'm a visiting lecturer for Durham and uh, Newcastle um, at, and the uh, side. Um, but for a long time, I was trying to explore, still was trying to explore the, the principle of home. What is home? What makes a home home? When, as an asylum seeker, I came to the UK and the UK became an exile. So if exile becomes home, what happens with home? That's the question I asked myself in uh, um, a movie, which we did for... Uh, there was funding from the European fund from European community. So we did a movie, I call it Seven Years in the Castle, uh, seven, uh, seven, sorry, uh, years in the castle, yes. And it was seven minutes. And I asked that question. And but that question kept in my mind. So in 2010, I went to uh, Southern University to do my master's in design studies to explore the identity and explore what is home. I've researched um, home identity, uh, faith, culture, art, and how they interact together. Um, uh, thank you. In my studies, I was trying to see what is the British identity. It is a new identity, so understandably, understandably doesn't have a form. And what makes it even more difficult is the identity is made up from many nationalities. So it's not just, it's not like the American Irish, for example, it's one nationality came from Ireland, settled in, in uh, USA. And then uh, they have this um, a new identity that bring this together. So they have one form, uh, cloth wise, cultural wise, uh, they, they can um, adhere to and that, can bond, if you like, the culture together and in the generations yet to come. And there's always, the, the reason why we mention this, because there's always a concern that um, integration or assimilation, which one you want to do, do you want to be a part, but you want to keep your identity visible, or do you want to sort of merge, you know, dissolve in the community, the hosting community, and just not be there anymore? This has happened with the Yemeni community back in the 1800s, late 1800s, early 1900s, when they, many of them came as merchant navies and they dissolved. And now in South Shields, for example, where they existed about hundred years ago, we have, for example, John Muhammad. So John, grandfather, 
is a Muslim Yemeni. They dissolved in the community. Two generations later, John is a Christian Jordi or Christian uh, British English, who the only thing linked to the Yemeni uh, and Islam is his grandfather. They completely dissolved. They have lost their identity. It's something many people are keen not to lose. So many of the Pakistani, the Indian, the um, the Bengali uh, communities are keen. The first generation are keen not to lose that identity. They want to celebrate their identity and say, "I am uh, Pakistani and I am British and I am both." And there's lots of studies that done this. So I've done these studies and I was trying to come up with a form to express that identity. What we've seen is there's lots of architects, many architects around the UK have tried to express that identity through the mosque. So some of them weren't really um, stereotypical or they brought basically copy and paste the design from one land, brought it to another, expressing that this is what Islam looks or what this is what identity looks. And that's not accurate in my views. Because this identity now in this part of the world has got now the two, two uh, form of identity, not just one. So you cannot just uh, have one over the other. You need to find a hybrid between the two. Some of the um, designs of the mosques have went completely the opposite uh, to become very futuristic, very modern. Um, and um, they... Uh, I mean, does it... Is the design successful? It's open for interpretation. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, personally, I haven't seen one yet. Even the, if we uh, go for the next slide, even the Cambridge Mosque, I know at the minute it's the icon, people loves it. And I really appreciate the effort that went into trying to express the identity of the British Muslim. Um, I still have a bit of criticism myself to it, but I think it's a very good step towards to actually express this new identity, this is a new form. Now, in my studies, what I was trying to have a form for the, uh, for the British Islamic identity, and again, I'm stressing, it's important because if, if that identity is not clear in the head of the British Muslim, you'll have issues, which we've seen, uh, we'll have issues of allegiance, of loyalty, of um, integration, of um, of um, coexisting, and that will result in many issues which we've seen visible. The report of Tufail Tariq, uh, Professor Tufail uh, from Durham University back in 2000, I think, and two, have uh, talked about this and expressed it, and it statistically shows that we need to uh, have more um, positive and um, proactive role in stressing that identity and observing it. The way I see, for example, Faika's work is she's spontaneously expressing this new identity away from the restrictions that maybe being in Pakistan only would be, would be posing. Uh, so now she's painting in UK uh, what is she feels it is beauty. Believe it or not, agree or not, there are lots of things that go subconsciously and then flow on the surface and we don't understand why but you can never um, underestimate the influence of your surrounding. And now many Pakistani British, when they go to Pakistan, they go in there with a bit different culture, even if it was slightly different to what the culture is there. Now this is the new identity that's growing. And putting it in a form, allow it to celebrate, allow to celebrate it and, and engage it proactively and express it proactively. When you have all this nationality coming from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, from um, uh, Morocco, from Egypt, from Lebanon, uh, there is not one form to, to bring them together. And you cannot do this. So what I decided to do is to look first into the commonality between Islam and the Britishness. The pattern, the Islamic pattern is one point where they cross easily together. So on your right, there is this big hole with that statue. This is, uh, there is, you've got big, massive arabesque on the floor. This is not a Arabic or Islamic building. This is the house. This is the hall where the House of Commons in England uh, meet with the House of Lords in the middle. 
And this was made by the whole parliament was burned down, uh, burned, burned to ashes in the 1800s. So the architect who designed and built that building decided he wanted to build something that is uh, true to the hosting society, although he was a Catholic, but he wanted to build something that genuine to the Church of England, very religiously. He decided that design is religiously Christian. If you show this to anybody in the Arabic world, and I did the study, or Islamic world, they will say this is Arabesque. Now, in the name, you know, the, the secret is in the name, it's Arabesque. It's actually designed, that's just that's, that's Arab thing, that's Islamic motives in this pattern, but he believed this is English. So I went back to see where the commonality intersect. And from there, I decided to create a script and I called it the Queen Elizabeth II, hence my Lordship. So I created a, uh, a script that after that was actually the second script. The first one completely failed. When I designed one, when I, when I did the test, people said, I can't see Britishness about it. So we discarded that. And I have a book that I haven't published yet that I talk about the journey. Um, so what I did, I went completely back, word in history, and I took the Kufi, which is one of the first Arabic scripts in history, and um, um, and I took the the Gothic. And there's a lot of cross between the two, and I made them into one script. And now we have one script that's bilingual. It's actually more than bilingual because it's right. It's right Latin. And you can see here are examples of. Uh, writing in Arabic, the using the script. Um, you can see it's got the diamonds at the top and sometimes got the diamonds at the bottom as well. It's very angular. And that is also Kufi. Uh, that's Kufi, but also Gothic. And I call the queen. This uh, painting, it's a painting on a Hindu paper, uh, sorry, Indian paper. Uh, I think it's called, um, it's, I think it was banana uh, or rough cotton paper. And I wrote, using my script, I wrote in eight languages, including Arabic, uh, Kurdish, uh, Farsi, uh, Polish, English, obviously. Um, I wrote, welcome, ahlan wa sahlan, khosh amdeed, in all these languages, in one script. And my message is with that script, we all are human, we all are human, although we speak different languages. That's the message of that script. And at the minute, at the end, we all meet on that human level. This painting is on the door of um, a church in Sunderland. Um, I also wrote the word piece in, in, on purpose. I did this word uh, design. So you'll have at the top piece in Arabic, salam. And at the bottom, you have the word piece. And I wrote a paper about this uh, because one of the things I'm exploring is also the, um, the furniture to to express the identity. And with that is what house did, how the house could be different of John to Muhammad. The difference will be, they all have the same functionality. They all will, you know, they want the dishwasher, they want a washing machine, they want a sofa, but the colors and the design makes a difference. They will choose it, you know, spontaneously. They don't actually go there and say, I want to express my identity. They just go and buy what they like. This is how, they express their identity. And this is how what the house of FICA, for example, will be different to the house of Janet, who is next door. They have the same house next door and the same state. The house is a copy of each other, but inside the identity, the artwork is expressed, expressed differently, hence the creating the Kofi, uh, the QO2. And that paper, alhamdulillah, was received well in the um, exhibit. It, it was a... a uh, a conference in Sydney. Uh, that was the same year that had the Mac Fest, by the way. <laughs> the last Mac Fest we had, I had with you guys. And that became furniture uh, in the house. Um, this is the test of them. Uh, so what I'm going into next is having more of, um, of these items, create more items, more designs to express a, the British identity in a more defined form and distinguished. Um, there was a, oh, sorry, there should be a, there should be a, okay, it's not here. There was, uh, I've designed also, oh, here it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
no, so we have, it have to take a soul. You'll see now next uh, a mosque that I've designed. It hasn't been built yet, uh, and that's just a proposal. Uh, hopefully they will go with it. And what I've done is I've uh, put calligraphy. So I'm doing the facade of the mosque. This is this is it. Uh, this is Philip's script. So I haven't really put my script, but that was just a concept. Uh, still looking into to have uh, my own script on, on the mosque. Uh, the shell is over. We're still to see if they're going to go with the uh, my proposal or not. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all. That was fascinating, my goodness. <laughs> Thank you, Kaisara. Our QA now. Um, there was lots of love for you, Faika and Hanifa, uh, in the chat um, about the painting, about your journeys, and about your um, your choices uh, and how you made them. Choice of expression, yeah. Um, uh, Kaisara, I'm sure you have a few questions for our artist. Uh, no, I'm just uh, reeling from all the wonderful work. Uh, so basically, what's the latest project, Hanifa, for you? What are you working on at this moment in time? Is there a painting going? And the same question for you, Kai. Yeah, I'm actually working on a documentary right now. Um, wow. <laughs> Tell us about it. Yes, I'm part of an art fellowship. I'm happy to share it when I'm done. Um, as 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 with my work, it's mostly about storytelling, and this time around, the documentary is going to be featuring um, an indigenous um, all woman industry pottery industry from my hometown. So I'm going to be talking about their processes, and talking about the work of art that they create to sustain themselves. So it's it's really interesting and. While I'm doing that, I'm also painting and I'm at home with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it reminds me of my time. I was writing novels and I had babies at the same time. It's, it's uh, hard. What can you do? So, Faika, what about you? What, are you working on something? Um, yes, actually, I had my, as I mentioned earlier, I had my solo show last month and uh, their um, few gallery approached me and they booked my two solo shows for next year. So I will be started working on those two solo shows. At the moment, I'm just relaxing and collecting my ideas, inspirations. And uh, in a month time, when I feel I have so much inside me to express, I will go back to my studio. At the moment, I'm just enjoying with my kids, my family, and yeah, working on, uh, on the ideas next year. Uh -huh. In February, inshallah, inshallah, I'm going to have two solo shows in Pakistan, Lahore. Mashallah. Are you not going to be part of MacFest next year? No, you'll have to. <laughs> yes, definitely, I'm part of MacFest. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm part of MacFest. So Fest yeah, you are booked your lady now for next year. <laughs> so, I'm going to show yeah. more of your artwork, you and Hanifa. So, Richard, what about your poetry? You said you're working on poetry or something. Tell us about, about it. I've, uh, yes, I've published a book on poetry. Um, it's, um, my poetry is an outlet uh, for me, like all of the artwork I do. I suppose like we all artists use it in a way to outlet. So um, uh, sometimes we paint, sometimes, well, we use whatever tools we have, creative tools to express ourselves in one way or another. Um, or to express our um, protest or our um, admire. There was, uh, so I maybe I'll watch something. Uh, one of my hats is I am the manager of the Islamic Center of Newcastle. And we go through the doors, we have loads of um, sometimes marriage cases, failing or successful uh -huh. cases. Um, and observing uh, this and witnessing uh, gives me sometimes pleasure or anger and expresses with art. But I try to be positive. Um, I am, uh, I love uh, I love the women, the femininity, uh, femininity, um, and I celebrate it with my, with my, my poems. I was happy when Faika was spontaneously, she, she's, 
um, Faika is talking about her art when she said it's happiness. But if you look at it, there is the sun, there's the colors, there's two beautiful female dancing with flowers and makeup. That's what you see. And a happy moment in a wedding celebrating uh, the unity of two uh, beautiful souls. And, but the beauty there, the main prominent thing is the femininity. And um, so in a way saying, uh, Fika's painting saying, joining, uh, sharing femininity into the world is sharing happiness. And I suppose I also uh, share that and I see that as a beauty and I talk about it sometimes from a point of view of a man, but sometimes from a point of view of a woman. And in one of my poems, I say, what's wrong with me? I love you and I hate you. What's wrong with me? I cannot leave you. What's yeah. wrong with me? I call you just so you would ask me, hello, how are you? Oh. But I hate you. Oh. Okay. Uh, and that's just a part of the poem. Beautiful. Yes, it is absolutely. So, Richard, we've got only a few minutes left, and yes. we've, we've been told we've still got some lovely paintings. Yes. Or to show Fika. We won't have time for discussion. We'll just go through them, and then okay. Mariam will wrap up. So, first, Fika, we've got two paintings of yours, okay. and then Hanifa's. Okay, uh, Steve, the next one, please. Gorgeous, thank you so much. Can we have Hanifa's remaining paintings? Oh, that's me. Okay, <laughs> Nutella. I love that. Yes. <laughs> What's the significance of this? Go on, tell us a bit about this one. Uh, I wanted to, it was it was a new um, like I'm always saying about experimentation it was a new thing I wanted to try and sometimes I use myself as a subject and sometimes my friends so this one I decided to use myself to create this kind of artwork and I just did it mostly for it's lovely <laughs> yeah okay next one Steve <laughs> yes I am my okay next one Steve now, who's that? Can you tell us a little bit about this one? Yeah, this is a fiction. Hanifa, we really, can't I wanted to, like, I was part of a collection here for this. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear okay, you. Okay, so this is part of a collection. This is, the, the title of this artwork is actually Bloom. It is to connote joy and happiness. And those um, pink beads on her head and on her neck are like adornments to show how special she is. It's mostly like just to connote joy, really. She's happy. So I was, I was feeling that mood and I painted that. It was part of the collection. I exhibited it back in 2016. Excellent. Thank you. Ah. That's nice as well, mashallah. Thank you. This was exhibited in New York in 2020, I think. And this one? Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about this one. Um, I wanted to use um, earth tones, like clay colors. And as usual, I use the watercolor to connote that. And also, she's, I, 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 it's not like I'm obsessed with beads and adornments, but I wanted to add something for her to like add to her outfit. And those markings are like um, how it, it was talking about scarification, about, about how our life experiences, they always like show on us and yeah, like scars. So whenever, whatever you go through, it's always going to show on you and hopefully it will be something positive. <laughs> but that's, that's the, yeah. us who, uh, really whatever we go through and whatever we um overcome and enjoying the whole process of life okay. uh, steve hey i love these colors uh-huh yeah so this is an acrylic uh, tell us a bit about this oh yeah it's acrylic on canvas um um 
actually, actually, what year was this? I can't remember what year was this, but um, this is actually quite sad. It's a little bit depressing. Um, when I painted this, I had just unfortunately watched like a shooting on Facebook. I think it was in New Zealand that like a man entered a mosque and shot people down. So I was I was very sad about it, and I just entered my studio and I started painting. And I was using this color to show that. I mean, the title of this artwork is Souls, but that was that was just the thing. It's sometimes my work is spontaneous, and I just want to create something because of something I might have just experienced. Yeah. Okay. Next one, Steve. Oh, purple cabbage. I wow. created comes for International Women's Day in 2020. <laughs> that is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Steve, next one. Mashallah. Yeah, this was made from, I think you're familiar with paprika, like a spice, but this was made from spice. So nearly the end of here, my goodness. So, so Hanifa, we've got a member of our MacFest team, Mariam, she's from Nigeria as well. So we're hosting two Nigerians. <laughs> I, I, okay. I don't think yeah so mariam i'm going to hand over to you to wrap up for tonight <laughs> okay thank you very much thank you very much um richard for hosting this panel it has been wonderful listening to our panelists showcasing their beautiful beautiful paintings and artworks full of creativity and history thank you faika and anifa for sharing your creative sides with us and also to our um, attendees both old and new thank you very much for always making the time to join us so the festival is almost coming to an end We'll be hosting the final digital event tomorrow um, on Muslim women photographers at 6 p.m. UK time. And for those of you who live in Manchester, you can join us on this Saturday um, at the Illumination Painting Workshop at the Longside Library. And on Sunday, we'll join us for a musical bonanza at the um, Larry Theatre in Southport Keys, which will mark the end of the Muslim Women's Festival for 2020. So please join us in whichever event that you can. So thank you and salam alaikum. Thank you, Mariam. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you all. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you, Richard, so much. Lovely ladies.